we have our first spooky print. Hello, welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today I have a really great sewing pile kind of showing of all the sewing projects I've been up to, I believe for the past two, two and a half, maybe even three months. Um, I'm not quite sure when I did my last one. This one would be some late summer, early autumn, and some spooky Halloween sewing. So all of that is very exciting. This pile is my pile that I'm probably the most proud of to date, which is good because I should be, I guess, improving. <laughs> um, given the fact it's been, I've almost been sewing for a year now. It'll be a year in October. I didn't start sewing garments until January though, so that'll be my year anniversary. But first up, I have just like a simple alteration. Um, some of you may remember this dress from a past haul, but this dress was a bummer when I bought it because I, I couldn't try it on and so I didn't realize that its sleeves were mismatched. So I took off the sleeves. This was a pretty lazy modification because I literally just sewed down the raw edge of the sleeve and then ripped the sleeve off, um, which was very lazy of me. But I'm pretty happy with the result. And then I also hemmed it. This was maxi length and it was kind of horrifying in a maxi length so I think it looks much better as kind of a cute little 60s sheath dress. So that is this guy here. Next up I kind of have another horrifying thing. Um, so this is a pair of pants I made for one of my friends. I had made a dress from this material before and he asked me if I would be willing to make a pair of pants for him. So I did. Um, I put in a lime green zipper. He told me I could kind of make them as horrible as I wanted. So it has a lime green zipper. The like piping is mismatched on the pockets. Uh, this was my first pair of pants ever actually and it was pretty complicated. It's basically a pair of jeans. Um, I will link the pattern that I've got down below because this one is a modern pattern. They're kind of a bell bottom almost. Um, I'm not sure if I'll have pictures of him to put in this video which is too bad um, but he's very excited about them. I did have to take out a lot of hip because these were definitely made for a curvy woman and not a like skinny man because they're I think a 32 inch waist or something like that and so with a woman they assume you have like fairly good hips uh with a man you don't uh he's just up and down but yeah I'm pretty pleased with these I even did the over stitching in different colors so this side of the pants is all blue and this side is all pink and so yeah I'm just I'm pretty pleased for how horrendous they are there's a lot of love that went into them next up is a practice round actually of the same fabric of the dress I'm wearing I guess I did make this dress. Um, I really love this dress. It has full arm movement, which is amazing. But this is the shirt I made. This was a practice shirt for another material. I had an extra yard, I think, left. So I figured I'd make it up into a top, and this is the result. The fit in this is not my favorite, and I think I need to do some research and figure out why it's like kind of bagging the way it is. But I do really like it, and I will wear it. It'll look really cute tucked into my like 1950s style dresses. Next up we have our first spooky print. Um, so this is, uh, it's cute, it has little like poison bottles on this. I'm also going to link this fabric down in the description because I think it's so cute and it comes in black and purple. So if you want to make something out of it, you definitely can. Um, and then I didn't show you, so that mat zipper matches perfectly. This is like a nice yellow zipper all the way down. Um, because this is a shirt and I kind of care less a little bit about quality. I just kind of use some colors that I wouldn't normally use, but I think this is also, again, really cute. It didn't really have any fit fixes in it um, because, yeah, like I said, I'm not quite sure what's wrong fit-wise there. And then next up, or last up, or no, not last up, we still have, I think, four more garments. Um, this is another spooky sew. This is based off of a slip and petticoat pattern from the 1940s or 50s. I'll have to check, but I don't know if you can tell but this is some cool kind of spiderwebby looking material. Um, so I just thought it would be fun to kind of make a spooky slip that also like kind of puffs out garments really nicely. And then I am pretty pleased that this is my first bias cut garment and I think it turned out really, really well. So that is very exciting. And then yeah, it's also my first undergarment period and I will be making lots more slips from this pattern because I think it turned out so pretty and so nice and it fits me really, really well and I can have it to the exact length I want. So I will be making more things like this. Next up, I have kind of a fall dress. Um, this is a 1940s pattern. The tricky part here is this like 
pleat kind of here um, that goes all the way down the body. It looks great on my butt actually, which is super fun. And then it's also a collared shirt, which made it a little bit more challenging. And then I use these really nice white kind of milk glass looking buttons. I have decided to truly take as somebody on YouTube somewhere said, like, use the best of your stash while you can. And I have taken that to heart and I've started to, like, not hoard my best bread buttons for further projects. Because if I make a project that I think these buttons would be much better on, I can just put new buttons on this one and take these buttons for the other one. And so I'm going to wear these buttons until then. And then, yeah, this was just a hard thing to construct. I will say my lines don't align perfectly, as, like, this is over by a millimeter where they match and they're not, like, equally as deep. But I'm still really pleased with it because it was a really hard garment to make. Next up, I love this skirt. So this was actually a dress pattern because I wanted it for, I don't know how easy it is for you guys to tell, but the bottles are going, there's like a stripe of bottles going the different way along the skirt. That's just like the type of little detail I love in vintage. So I wanted to do that with this pattern. And so I did, and I think it's really cute. But yeah, so this is a skirt pattern from a dress, so I just put on a waistband instead of obviously attaching it to the bodice. And then this also has two pockets. Um, I actually think I'll use this um, pattern more for gathered skirts because I really like it because it puts kind of the two things up at the front and it makes it a little bit fuller in the back, which is how I like my skirts. But yeah, I think this is super cute. I love this pattern. Um, I can wear it with this shirt and yeah, I have the waistband going a different direction and then I have the stripe along the bottom and it's the perfect length, and I'm just so happy with it. Oh, and I like did actually, I've learned how to sew in hooks and eyes nicely. So that's been exciting because those also look like nicely and like couture done. Next up, uh, I have a whole video showing the process of making this play suit, but this is my round two of the play suit. I had this really fun watermelon fabric I was super excited about. So these are the shorts, they're less exciting, but I did match the stripes. Um, and I think they turned out really, really well, and I'm excited to wear them next summer, unfortunately. And then um, this blouse I will wear, I think, during the fall season, even though it's not very fall. I still, I love this watermelon fabric. Um, this blouse, I actually drafted this from the pattern. The pattern needed a ton of adjustments, so this is the first time I've gotten to draft something. And then it also has some really cool buttons on it that I decided to use, and if I change my mind on having them on this, I'll just swap them for something else. Um, and then yeah, I also think I did a good job with the stripes here. I think overall they match, and they're very generally even. The back isn't maybe like my best work on even stripes, but I do think it's all really cute and it fits really well. My one bummer is I took, I did not take in, when I made this the first time, I took in about like a half inch on each side, and then I regretted it at the end. So I didn't do it with this one, and then I ended up taking it a half inch anyway, and that was like after I hemmed it and everything. So that's a bit bummer, because that's a little bit messy. But I guess it'll make it so whoever owns this after me will be able to take it out a little bit for herself. I am so happy with this play suit. This might be my most favorite thing I've made. Um, I do really like the skirt I just showed you, and then my next piece that I'm showing you, I really, really love. And the next piece that I'm showing you is a suitable for all seasons, so I'm very excited about it. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm getting much better, and I find that I love working with striped materials because of all the play you can do. Um, speaking of stripes, this is the last piece I made. So this has, was a 1940s pattern. You can tell these are very 1940s sleeves. Um, so I made this out of, I was gonna say couch material. Um, what's that type of fabric? Uh, upholstery fabric. I made this out of upholstery fabric. Um, I think the stripes are so beautiful and I loved how pastel-y it is. I feel like the pastels will work well into fall and then they'll also work really well in spring and summer. This would actually be kind of hot to wear in the summer, but as you can see I have my stripes going the opposite way and then I accidentally even these like kind of match up. Uh, and then this is the first time I've worked with a bias tape trim to kind of make things look cute and different. I didn't want to do the facing here and I wanted to trim it with bias tape because I had this really beautiful like kind of minty bias tape that I thought would look so cute and I thought it would make the dress look even cuter and I was right and then yep I did the buttons up the front. I think this is my first time knowing how to properly do bound buttonholes on the inside so you're supposed to like not cut all the way through on bound buttonholes and that is a new thing that I learned. <laughs> whoops uh, to past projects, whoops sorry. Oh well, but to this current project, 
I figured it out and it looks so nice and yeah I'm just I'm really proud of this I'm actually really proud of all these pieces um, this took me a lot more time to make this amount of pieces but they're so much better finished and just look so much nicer that I am really really excited about that um, because I am very clearly getting better. That is it for this video. Thank you for taking the time and watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoy vintage content as well as sewing content, definitely hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you around. This is also just the beginning of some of my spookier October content because this had some spooky stuff in it. Um, so definitely stick around for that. I have some really fun content coming up. I hope I will see you next time. Goodbye!